Hey guys, it's Hal Bigley once again, coming at you with another one of my how-to cosplay tutorials. And this time, in case you haven't guessed, we're covering TV Captain America. This guy right here. So let's take a look at the costume and away we go. So let's quickly cover a little bit about the character's history. Of course, Captain America goes back to 1941. He was the creation of Joe Simon and Jack Kirby working for Marvel Comics, then called Timely Comics. Like most superheroes, he went through kind of a fallow period when superheroes fell out of favor in the 50s. Stan Lee at the newly revived Marvel Comics brought him back as a man out of time, a guy that was literally frozen for two decades after World War II. This is the Captain America most people know, joined the Avengers, in fact was revived in Avengers number four. Captain America rose to new popularity in the recent Avengers Marvel Universe movies, as we all know. And this is roughly his look. But in the 40s, he got his own serial, uh, movie serial, that is. And between that time and now, he also starred in a very short-lived, in fact, just two TV specials, short-lived uh, CBS series, again, two TV specials, really, uh, based on the character. Now, like most of the projects back then, they radically altered his costume. Here it is in the first 1979 TV movie. And then in the second Captain America TV movie called A Death Too Soon, we got this version. Much closer to the comic book version of the character that we all know and love. Why the changes? At that time, Marvel was demanding their characters on TV lean much more much more toward the comic version and they're also asking for more licensing money now this is kind of late in the day the incredible hulk was always a big success was a continued success at that time but captain america not so much same with doctor strange same with spider-man so this was kind of late in the day for marvel to be asking for more money and for the characters to look a little bit more like the ink and paper counterparts but that resulted in Captain America having this costume. Now I have made as a cosplayer, not just this costume, but some variations on it, which you're going to see here. So let's take a look at the costume as I put it together, and we'll come back to talk about each individual piece. So here's the whole thing, shield and all. I'll be detailing how the helmet and all its accessories went together in just a bit. A lot of these pictures were taken at conventions, obviously. It's kind of nice to have a costume that doesn't involve a heavy utility belt or a long, heavy, flowing cape to worry about. It's a fairly comfortable costume. It's not too hot, not too heavy. And a lot of fun. All right, let's take a look at the bodysuit. As you know, of course, the TV Captain America, he's got pretty much what we saw in the comics. Star on the chest, the vertical stripes around the midsection, the pirate boots, the gloves. So when I designed this, I went after that, that kind of basic image. Again, I don't go in for a lot of muscle shading, but if you notice, I did try to incorporate some chainmail effect in the printing, in the actual design. You also notice, like I've talked about in some of my other cosplay tutorials, you have to design things a little bit stretched because, stretched vertically, because once you've got these suits on, because they're tight, they're going to pull this way. 
So the star looks by itself a little squeezed. It really is. So that when you get into this costume, it pulls it into shape. Just like that. You notice I've uh, added a long neck with these because of course it's got to go and get tucked under the helmet, under the blue balaclava you'll see me talk about soon. Now, of course, when people think of the show, they think of actor Reb Brown, who played Captain America, and the fact that they gave him a motorcycle helmet. Now, back then, these TV specials and shows had to justify grown people running around in these ridiculous costumes. Making Captain America a special agent that needed a protective suit on that super-powered bike, and of course a helmet, made sense. This was also the period of Evil Knievel, who wore patriotic star-spangled outfits and capes, and had motifs like that. So they kind of, sort of gave a little nod to that direction too. My problem when making the helmet was finding an authentic 70s helmet like this. Most modern helmets are really big with all kinds of extra padding for safety issues. I looked at football helmets. I looked at all kinds of things. You can see them here. Finally, I settled on these two vintage helmets, did some tests. I finally narrowed it down to this one, just for the fit, really. Even with that, I had to really rip out a lot of the guts of the helmet to make it as form-fitting as possible because and even the big, bulky, muscular Red Brown, who acted as this character in the 70s, he had this problem too. The bigger you make the head on any character, any drawing, this is an artistic tip too, the smaller and more puny the body's going to seem. I call that the space ball effects. Just like when you draw the Hulk, the opposite is true. You want to give him the smallest head to make his body look outrageously huge. And even though I work out, I'm not big like Lou Ferrigno or Red Brown, but I wanted to avoid a really big helmet head. And the 70s helmets being much smaller was the way to go. Of course, this puppy is very snug and small, and even without some of the interior, it's still a very snug fit. Obviously, I painted it blue. This, these additions, this is all foam. It's foam board. You can see the wings are a bit layered and some marker application is in there. Again, I looked at the, uh, the TV version, photographs. A tough part really was finding a visor like this. Originally, if you see here, I was lucky just to shape and cut a um, one single smooth piece across the eyes. Not quite exactly what I wanted. Finally, it took some looking because now most modern shields, they cover either the whole face, they're very much bowed out and bubbled, or they just don't have this tapered look. Luckily, I, with a little bit of bending, I was able to fit this up between the inner padding of the helmet and the seam here, give it a little super glue, but luckily it fit just where I needed it, it stays in place. Um, unlike the TV version, I did not put straps in this. Or have a fitting later and I'll show you just how this goes on. But lots of fun, lots of fun. Now in addition to the helmet, you'll notice that the TV version of Captain America also had a bit of an under mask, again to replicate Captain America's famous comic book half mask kind of hood. So what they did was, of course they added a tight balaclava, which you'll see in a bit, with a, uh, a kind of a fitted plastic mask, and that's what I aim to duplicate here. Now this is simply a Halloween mask, like you see up here. Very carefully cut and shaped. Matching blue paint was applied to it. And this is worn with a balaclava under the helmet. And you see I did a little bit of shading, I did some lighter highlight sprays, some darker shading underneath. But we'll see all that working together in a bit. Very easy, very inexpensive to do. I don't know, are my seams straight? Oh, oh, oh. So here we are, I know it looks a little funny, but the same seamstress that made my gloves helped me make a fairly matched 
color-wise, balaclava. And of course, here is that manufactured mask underneath. The TV version had something similar going on under his helmet, especially in that second movie where it had to look very seamless. A helmet and maybe a one-piece under mask. Fairly comfortable. And when added to the helmet, one moment please, When added to the helmet, which is a very tight fit, you get a fairly cohesive look. Of course, I'm getting a lot of reflection here. But of course, this gets tucked into the costume, the bodysuit's neck, to create a further one-piece look. And you know what, compared to some of my other costumes like the 70s Batman Bronze Age costume, hearing is great, visibility is great. I really got nothing to complain about. The helmet's not that heavy. It's fairly form-fitting. And it's kind of worrying me how comfortable I am in these costumes now. It's getting to be a bit of a uh, concern, but a lot of fun. Again, nothing really costs that much. $80 to get the bodysuit printed, finding the helmet that was fairly cheap. This is one of those costumes where it's more of the time consumption as opposed to the money outlay. With most cosplays of mine, it's both. <sighs> Having custom work done, the balaclava, the gloves, the trunks, while the same seamstress, that was a little pricey, but that's an artist doing custom work. You should expect to pay them for their time. Gloves are inexpensive. Boots are inexpensive. Again, it was an outlay of time. You know, finding these pieces, getting these things just right, finding matching colors. All right, for the gloves, as you probably know, you can very inexpensively find commercially made gloves like this, of various quality and various prices. And these are fine, but I had a local seamstress very kindly make a slightly higher quality leather glove, which has a much better fit, much more authentic look. Very nice. And as you can see, she also inscribed in each one two very nice and Captain America appropriate slogans. And as you know, Captain America's gloves have that kind of flared swashbuckler look. And to achieve that, using just cardboard and a little bit of Velcro, I made these small inner guides that fit beneath the glove. Give me a second here. There you go. So it always stays flared out on the appropriate side there. Just like the comic book version of the character. Very easy and inexpensive to make. Again, cosplay does not have to be a break the bank proposition. Have fun with it. Use whatever resources you can find around your own house or what your friends may have and do what you can with what you have. Now let's talk about Captain America's belt. If you saw my previous tutorials on the making of Batman, you know I'm fond of using military belts very cheaply bought on Amazon or eBay inside the belts I manufacture. They always give you a very snug fit, very tight fit, so these things won't be slipping up and down your body as you're wearing them. And on the outside, I designed this with just, again, foam board. Navy blue and lighter blue um, pieces, just like that. Not quite like the TV belt, but it fits me better, flatters me a little better. And again, 
by using a military belt it really stays in place and this is all just sections taped together the belt is of course super glued in place you can buy this board at any michaels or joann's or hobby shops and it just fits together in the back like that of course you've got these flaps at the lower back but you can easily velcro them as you can see into place easy for me to say huh there that gives you a better idea very nice very cool easy to make and inexpensive too as you can expect captain america buccaneer type boots are easy to find online complete with a little cuff I made the mistake of a few years ago when I first started this cosplay getting some white boots and spray painting them and no matter what you do that paint's going to flake off just because of the nature of the substrate the material that the paint is being applied to now to make these cuffs flare out just a little bit I've got a little piece of cut foam in there don't tell anybody if people knew these superhero secrets, we'd never live it down. Just to give that a little dimension, a little outward flare, just like that. A lot of fun. One of the most memorable things about these two Captain America live action specials in the 70s was the fact that he carried a shield similar to the comic book Captain America's shield, but a little different. Because it doubled as the windshield on his super special motorcycle, part of it was see-through. Um, people that make fun of this version of Captain America, I always am quick to tell them, if you're going to hide behind a shield with 20 guys shooting at you, don't you need to see through it to see where you're charging? So getting this made was the tough part. I looked at all kinds of shields like police riot shields. Most of them were very triangular shaped or if they were round, they were not so convex shaped or they, they covered so much surface like they were, you know, four feet tall. Um, I didn't know what to do. I was kind of at my wits end. I finally called this guy. You see his name down here. An amazing fellow who said, I can make you that shield. He offered an amazing price. More importantly, he could do it in the month I had before the convention. I was going to debut this costume at, and he did an amazing job. Let's take a look. Here it is. What he did was he used an existing clear plexiglass shield he applied carefully cut colored decal tape to the back of the shield. Now you see I did some modifications. I did add some lighter paint to the blue star in the middle to help it further match the TV version. Originally there was only a strap in the center to hold on to it. I've added two straps so I can actually rest my hand through it. They are Velcroed on very carefully because no matter how little you wear these accessories and how light or heavy they are, even just carrying them, they're going to be bounced against your arm and that's going to wear and pull the point of contact away slowly. If you wore a shirt three times a year, but every time you wore it, you pull at the collar lightly, you know, eventually that collar is going to fray and finally come off. Now you'll notice there's some writing in here. Well, over the years at conventions, I've got the interior signed by Jim Steranko, Michael Zeck, went to the same art school I did. We got Jim Shooter, we got Alan Bellman, sadly recently deceased. He was the uh, Golden Age Captain America artist. Of course, John Beatty, the 80s Captain America inker, over Mike Zeck. Who am I missing? J.M. DeMatteis. I think that's about got it. Jim Shooter, yep. All folks who worked on the Captain America comic book. And of course I keep the shield 
in the best shape I can. All right, so here we go. The shield is fairly light, easy to handle. Again, at conventions like with any Captain America shield, you've got to watch it. This takes up a lot of room. You can suddenly put your arm down and slice somebody in half behind you without even knowing it. You can dent a wall. You can dent yourself with this thing. But fairly light, easy to carry, easy to manage. No, you cannot throw it. No, it does not come back like a Frisbee. I'm still working on that part, but a lot of fun. And yes, it's, it's nice to be able to, uh, to look through it. Very nice feature. And just for fun, I decided to create an alternative costume. Not just like the, the one you saw in the first Captain America TV movie in 1979, but just playing with the design. You see this now in the uh, comic books and the movies. Um, they're add stripes, they're add black, they're add a different mix of the design elements. As long as it says Captain America, as long as it says America, red, white, and blue flag. So I've recently um, created a new one. Let's take a look at that before we talk about the costume. Here it is. As you can see, I'm using a lot of the same accessories, only the body suit has been changed. You see that V-shaped pattern on the front. And on the back, I pared it down to just the bare minimum of the vertical torso stripes. Of course, I added stripes down the sleeves that continue from the upper shoulder area. A really fun alternate look for this character. Okay, here is that design, here is that suit. Again, very carefully designed, very carefully printed, long neck. Some things, of course, squashed for stretching once on the body. But this particular design I really like because it still reads as Captain America, but I was able to play with things like, like a V-shaped torso things like that, nice stripe down the arm. Again, working with the belt, the gloves, the boots, the helmet, all the other accessories you've seen. Not a lot of muscle shading, you see a bit here on the back again, incorporating the, a lot of the, um, the chain mail effect. But a lot of fun. And fairly easy. Not a lot of moving parts with this costume. Just like in the comics, it's basically a man in tights with some accessories. So, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, you can always email me, hit the comment box. Please subscribe. Please look at my other costume how-to tutorials. Let me know who you'd like me to cover next. We still have Ant-Man. We've got my regular Captain America. We've got Hawkeye. Not even sure where his costume is outside. Man. Oh, we've got so many. And I'm working on a top secret new version of a familiar classic Marvel character. His 70s incarnation. I'm really stuck on the 70s, aren't I? So anyway, just let me know. And I'm going to have a link here to a previous 
cosplay tutorial I've done here or here, I never know. I'm looking at this backwards even on my monitor. It doesn't even say Captain America. It says Night Pack. I don't know. What do you want? But thank you for joining me. I hope this helps you. Hope this inspires you to be creative. Remember, it's not about the money. It's about the creativity. Doing with what you've got what you can and having fun. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon.